So hello guys! Welcome to the Toman YouTube guitar channel. Look who I have! I am freaking out properly. <laughs> I am a huge fan of that pedal show. And this is exactly where these gentlemen are from. This is Dan Steinhardt and this is Mick Taylor. Hello! Hello! Chris, we've already met. Yes, we did. Chris and I met um, in, at Toman in Germany. A couple of weeks uh, back. A couple of weeks back, yeah. doing some victory amp stuff, and we had a good uh, a good session. So oh, yeah. hopefully those videos will be up at some point. But yeah, very cool. Absolutely, good definitely. to see you again. We could sit here for a week, talking, you know, volume, why let's needed, listen, let's listen, you know, let's pros, listen. minuses, and well, everything. we're we're kind of forced down this route, aren't we? Because here at GuitarCon, there's three studios pumping next to one another, and so in each of the studios, it's difficult to have really loud guitar. Amps. It's not like back at that pedal show where Dan and I can just play really loud all day long. And I guess <laughs> in the real world, uh, that's how it is for most people most of the time. You know, we're very lucky to be able to play loud and be inspired by that sound. Mm. So, fair to say, Dan, neither of us are big fans of playing quietly. So I, the thing is, uh, it's not. It's not the volume, the sound pressure levels that really concern me. It's just that I don't. It, it doesn't feel the same. Yeah. And, and sorry, not that it doesn't even feel the same. It's that it's not as inspiring to me. There's something about the reason I played guitar in the first place was to be in a rock and roll band and to make loud, angry noises. And I love that. I still love that. Yeah. And I, you know, I think um, a, a big part of the sound that inspires me is certainly a sound that sits with drums. And bass, and sure. not, and not, tippy yeah. tappy drums. Yeah. A guy who's rocking out, and a guitar that sits in with that. That's where, that's where I want to live. Yeah, that's yeah. where it's all all in balance. That yeah, Cause, cause yeah. That's exactly the thing. You know, you have uh, your whole setup, and if you change one very important part in that, mm -hmm. like your speaker is not moving at all mm -hmm. anymore. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, that's it's, why they have to be. However, yeah. however, that setup is just entirely inappropriate if I'm by myself trying to work out, you know, um, a lick or whatever. Sure. And your family is, you know, next yeah, door. Absolutely. And, yeah, absolutely. So, for that reason, um, we were just thinking about to find out at which level and we don't have like a dB meter, maybe I have on my cell phone, but, you know, just more of the um, the idea, how quiet will you go with your amp until you really don't have any fun anymore? Like, yeah. like when it really doesn't make any sense to, to use a cab, right. where, yeah. where it's way more comfortable to, to have your, your monitors, your okay. studio monitors, and have like an IR loader, which does the job maybe a lot better than like a, a ridiculously quiet. Yes, okay. sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure. And um, well, let's see. Let's see what okay. we get to. We've I'm got skeptical. So we have a what is that? A Rev Generator 120. Mm -hmm. Yes, which is the the big one, the big boy, which yep. has like so a the, lot of channels. Yeah, and lots yeah. of channels, lots of lo lovely colored lights and things. But the <laughs> the clean channel sounds lovely. So there's, there is nothing else there, it's just guitar straight into a clean channel. Now this is really, really quiet. Yeah. Yeah, that's how quiet it is. Yeah. We, we literally never play that quietly in that middle channel. No. Unless we're going, oh my god, it's so quiet you can talk over it. So. Yeah, yeah. Yep, so... Now, let's, a couple of overdrive pedals with that, so we've got the, um, the Kingsley Page. And then the DM drive. Is that the uh, Robert Keeley DM drive signal? That is the that Robert Keeley DM drive. Effect. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, well, I'll, t- I'll tell you how. I'll tell you how quiet is too quiet for me. Straight off the old there. Mm-hmm. Um, is when you can hear the clack of the yeah. plectrum on the yeah. strings, which yeah. is happening right now. There, and there's something really interesting about that. When you a, a lot of guys who um, who are filming guitar videos and they're using the mic on the camera, they condense the mic. Yeah. And you can hear. Yeah. Yep. Above, above. Yep. That you hear, you know, you're hearing the. Yeah, sure. But I'm because sure of the we, characteristics we, of the mic. And, and it's, well, it's just because it's, it's, it's compressing all the sounds. Yeah. So even though in the room it might not be that loud, what you're hearing is the click. The, the click. The part of that can actually sound really good because you're getting this really instant attack. Yeah. That's just I uh, used, used to be using jazz recording a lot where they would mic the sound of the plectrum um, on the strings as well as the. Yeah. As yeah. Well as the I mean, we've said this before, but okay. All right. So how how is that amp? Feeling to you? Uh, the in the clean setting, it's it's too quiet. Yeah, it's for me to use as a thing that really gets me going. I'd need to certainly give it some some love. However, as a bass tone for for this uh, situation, um, it's comfortable. It's not making me go, Whoa! <laughs> but I'm comfy. Okay, I want to do a quick tangent. All right, You'll notice that Dan and Chris have um, extremely nice tellies, and I, I, I'll be the I'll be the independent mediary here, saying that as examples of their breed, round lamb board, sixty three style, rosewood board telly, fifty style, blackguard, they are two of the best tellies I've ever heard. So. Come on, wow. give, us, give us a couple chords. Wow. I want you to go backwards and forwards, same okay. sound. Um, All right. You start, just uh, say, So we'll just whatever. use a... Um, e, e major, open E major, it's the best chord ever invented. Okay. Right, here we okay. go. <laughs> so... It's the crazy. It, so way more output. Uh, d- louder doesn't mean better. Let's just get that said. Um, when we set up levels for that pedal show, I always get down <laughs> to on his on his bottom string because it is this. And that's seven two seven point two k that bridge pickup. Seven point two k. So this there's no reason. Six something. No reason why it should be the way it is. It could be wood, but. That doesn't count, we know that. No, it doesn't count. No. <laughs> so, so Chris, what are you feeling through the rev? Let's, uh, let's get you plugged in and just have a, have a twinkle. Feels like you have a really nice a driver's car where the handbrake is just like one <laughs> click in. It it feels very rich and nice and and really comfy, mm. but it, it's it lacks in because, dynamics. Because the thing exactly because when you're digging in, it doesn't give you anything. Yeah. yeah. So this is one of the things about loud amplifiers, and this is um, this is a really important thing. Just because the amplifier is really loud, it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna kill everyone in the room. It just means when you wanna go there, yeah. you have that dynamic range that when you dig in, it it Something works else. with you, yeah? Um, but at the moment, when, you know, with the same sounds. Mm-hmm. 
I got nowhere else to go. And that sort of sound, it leads you into play a sort of a... Not sort of an anemic way, but it's, it's kind of very light, you know. Well, there's no... There's no... There's no, there's no, there's no um, if you've never experienced a really loud amp that couples with the guitar, mm. because there's an acoustic coupling that happens. I don't know the technical explanation for it, but it's obviously got to be to do with frequency and resonance. But you feel, when you feel the amp, you feel the guitar resonate. Yeah, and you feel so, your well, body resonate. Yeah. And the, 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 the whole thing creates a... It's a feedback loop. Yeah. It is, yeah. it is. Um, um, you know, we can't all have that all the time. No, so our options are... Let's have a go. Itself is actually nice. Yeah, you know? the tone itself is is satisfying and round. I've and given it a little bit of a of an EQ push, um, just a tiny, tiny little bit of an EQ push. Such a subtle difference, but it, it, it makes it, it, it's a huge. Yeah, it's quite interesting thing. though because your frequencies change. You're going against the laws of Fletcher Munson there. Yeah, but it, it also I mean, the only reason I've turned that curve is because I had a bit of a play with the app before. Okay, so it all depends on what it's going into. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. For more on EQ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Um, so that's that's the app. Nice. Yeah. Light, comfortable. You know, none of us are playing outside ourselves because you know we're not like. What? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. you couldn't you couldn't hold a note and get feedback though. No, no, that's, no. that's not going to happen. But it's pleasant. Okay, yeah. so now we're going to be going through a, a cab simulator. So what's going to happen is the output from this amplifier, just at the moment going into the speaker cab, will be uh, disconnected. The speaker cab will be disconnected, and then that will go to studio monitors. Exactly. So it's going through the two yeah. notes. Torpedo, Torpedo Studio. Studio. Very good. Which is, let me get this right, load box yes. and uh, full of IRs. Yes. Uh, IR, for anyone who doesn't know, is impulse response, which is a digital version of the sound of a space or a speaker. Or a speaker, so, which is moving and creating frequencies. And yeah, everything. yeah. And it's done uh, with magic. <laughs> and, and mirrors. And, and ones and zeros. Mirrors yeah. and magnets. And, uh, yeah. So this is the, so again, the sound of the amplifier. And I've just got, I do have a couple of effects on here. But into this, it sounded lovely and warm. Okay, I can work with that. Uh, the one has to turn up. Yes. Interesting, okay.
want to give it a go? Quickly. Okay, so my first impression is that coming out of the monitor sounds like a recorded guitar. Yep. Right? Yep. Now, interesting, because the experience in the room is vastly different. But I'm wondering... Can't wait to hear what's recorded. Can't yeah. wait to hear what's yeah. recorded, yeah. because exactly. you guys are going to be hearing yeah, exactly. recorded guitars. Yeah. Well, that, that kind of... It, so doing that reminded me of my time in Guitarist Magazine. So um, I worked in Guitarist Magazine for a long time, and... We used to do lots and lots and lots of demos, gear demos. And the way we did it in, uh, in the studio was, in order to, to ease the production, all the rest of the blah, 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 we'd be listening to studio monitors all the time. Right. So you wouldn't be, the amp might be going, but it wouldn't be going very loud. And the chances were you were listening to studio monitors a lot of the time mm. to lay down track parts and all the rest of it. Having since had the experience that we've had on that pedal show where we sit there and just turn amps up loud all day and thinking back to gigs and stuff, that is a more inspiring way for me to yeah. create. Yeah. However, however, if I've got to do something quick at home, recreate something, um, I've got to just knock down something really quickly that I'm familiar with, mm -hmm. I'm really happy using that kind of sound yeah. because I'm not worried about the feel too much. I'm, sure. I'm just worried about getting the notes down. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't, there's no creative process in that. It's just playing. Yeah. But yeah, I all when we were playing through the monitors, all I was hearing was studio monitors. Yeah. Yeah. And noticing a uh, latency, a lag time between this and that. Okay, let's quickly do that again but with a higher gain sound. Mm -hmm. Okay, you okay. play. You play. Yep. So let's use a bit of you. <laughs> Can we can we start with the the app? The cab. Strat.
interesting, very interesting. So we need to wrap up. Yeah. Yeah. Conclusions. I can't really make a conclusion until we hear it back. But yes. the, yeah. the experience of being in the room, just with the cab doing what cabs do, it's it's a visceral experience. Even at this level, it's a it's a vastly different experience than hearing it through yeah. monitors. Two things I would say. Yep. One, I wasn't sure enough. I was deliberately trying to play something tricky so that I could see whether I could cope with the latency or not. Two, it's amazing how quickly your ears become accustomed to a yeah. sound. Sure. Yeah. yeah, very true. I also have one or two things. First of all, the more gain you added, yeah. the, the less uncomfortable yeah. I felt yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing, playing with the 3D monitors. Because That's the history of rock and roll. It's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For it's more reason. compressed, it's more, you know, so it, it yeah, but when you have a, a very toneful, that sort of low gain thing, yeah. then the harmonics that are involved in that, and then I think the difference is, you know, certainly in this environment, yeah. are more apparent. Yeah. Very good. And the other thing, what I think is, uh, is the real reason for these stuff uh, to exist mm. at all. I was really struggling for a long time, like, we have pretty good power socks already. Yeah, yeah. So, you know why? Yeah. Why even more quiet? But actually, the point which you um, which you made with the with the plug plug plug, mm -hmm. you know, when you when you record a mm -hmm. quietly set amp, you have all of a sudden such problems like yeah, yeah. the tram yeah, yeah. or like you know the metro but next because you, you have know, to have the mic gain so high yeah, or right, the horses right. or the yeah, yeah. bell. Yeah. Yeah. From yeah. The, uh, I mean, I haven't listened to anything where Beer Massage recorded at his house. He uses one of these and he sounds exactly. amazing. Yeah. Exactly. So it is another piece of technology that you need to know the in and out of, but it's very yeah. interesting. So we'd be really interested to see what you guys think. Yep. Um, yeah, write oh, in the yeah. comments and, below. And, and, and the one comment you're not allowed to write is, oh my God, if you just set it up different and set the EQ different, it would have sounded so much better. Yeah. Because we kind of spent a little while doing that before the, uh, before yeah, the yeah. video. And we, our point was not to prove that it sounds exactly the same. There you go. Absolutely our not. Our point was just to, to talk a little bit about feelings, you know, how, how it feels to play Let's a guitar. Let's talk about our feelings. Yeah, I've been oh, feeling honey. a bit sad this week. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. And it's been a it's pleasure been to be on your channel. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So uh, I wish you guys a very awesome week yeah, here really at fun. GitCon. Yeah, Brilliant. And uh, you guys enjoy all the cool new videos coming up. Every Thursday we have a new guitar related video, so please subscribe so that you don't miss any of those. And on Friday, yeah. these guys are uploading super cool stuff. <laughs> so if you want you. to learn about gear, if you want to hear awesome guitar playing, if you want to see crazy artists uh, as guests on their show, or just want to have fun and, you know, you're sick of TV, which <laughs> I get <laughs> totally... <laughs> This is your series. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thank it's you. been a massive fun and uh, Cheers, a dude. great time. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.